Welcome to Mapping with R. In this course, you are going to learn the fundamental skills you need to make beautiful maps in R. We'll start out by talking about geospatial data, how it works, give you the kind of skills that you need in order to work with data throughout the course. Next, we'll move on to making static maps using ggplot. From there, we'll talk about how to make interactive maps in R. From there, we'll move on to talking about how to do some fundamental geospatial data analysis tasks. Finally, in the last section, we'll talk about how to make some more complicated maps, things like heat maps, flow maps, that type of thing. Now, you might be wondering at this point, why should I make maps in R? Well, if you're watching this course, I assume that you're already using R for your other data tasks. Why not keep everything in a single tool? Second, R is just a fantastic tool for making maps. Anything that you can do in ArcGIS or QGIS or any other tool, you can do in R as well. And you can just make some fantastic maps in R. What you're looking at now is a map made by developer Abdul Majid showing the course of the COVID pandemic over every day in 2021. You can see how the map shows the rates and you can see those changes over time in various parts of the United States. So when talking about geospatial data, there are actually two different types of data. There's raster data as well as vector data. Vector data is far more common. It consists of shapes used to represent things on maps, things like points, lines, polygons. All of those are used to represent, say, roads or cities or buildings. Raster data, as you can see from this lesson from the Carpentries, consists of pixelated or grid data where each pixel is associated with a specific geographical location. Raster data is often used to show patterns such as, in this case, the different types of land cover that make up the continental United States. Okay, I'm in our studio. I'm going to begin by loading the R Natural Earth package. This is a package that allows us to access geospatial data, and we'll learn about this in a later lesson. So I'll run that, and then I'm going to run the function NE countries. Now, if I bring this up down here, you can see it has brought in data on countries throughout the world. It's got a lot of different information about them, but this is actually geospatial data. If I scroll up to the very top here, oh man, a lot of data. Um, you can see this kind of metadata here, which we will again cover in a future lesson, and that tells us that it's geospatial data. Now watch this. If I run library tidyverse, and then I take that any countries data, and I pipe that into ggplot, and use the function geomsf, which is a special geom used for vector data in the sf format, which again you'll learn about, watch what happens automatically creates a map. And I did that in what, three, four lines of code? Similarly, if I run library map view, which is a function for making just kind of simple, straightforward interactive maps, and then run the map view function, you can see that I have an interactive map here. To show you just how great R is for making maps, let me access some geospatial data in R and then use that data to make some simple maps. Now I'm aware these maps are not going to win any awards, but what I hope you see is how simple it is to make maps in R and how integrated it can be into the workflow that you're already using. As we get started with the course, let me give you a little overview of what each lesson will look like. First, I'll be on video demonstrating some concept for you. I'll use slides a little bit, but I'll mostly work directly in R Studio so you can see exactly what it looks like to work with geospatial data and make maps in R. In each lesson, you can see the code that I used in the video to make the maps, work with geospatial data, whatever it is that I'm doing. Below that, there will be a your turn exercise. This is an exercise for you to practice the skill that I demonstrated in that video. Each your term will also have a little solution button. You can click that, it will pop up the code and possibly a video to show you how to solve the your turn exercise. Finally, at the bottom of each lesson, there will be a learn more section. This course will give you a nice overview of all of the concepts that we discuss. But of course, some people may want to go deeper and the learn more section will have links to additional resources 
if you want to learn more about any particular topic. Finally, if you have any questions, just go ahead and put those in the comments section down below each lesson. I or someone on my team will be notified and we will respond to your question.